Okay, welcome. In this section of the tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can basically bring in a raster image and use it as a um, as a reference for the artwork that we want to create in Illustrator. And there's a couple ways we can work, and there's some decisions we need to make at the beginning based on the type of artwork that we're going to be creating as we progress through the project. And so if the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new file. I'm just going to use a 2048 by 2048 48 image. And then um, I, if you're doing this on the through the course, I created this simple line drawing. I was doodling during a meeting, and I thought the doodle was funny, so I turned it into like a larger, simple sketch. Um, and I, with the intention of using it for this tutorial, it's not the most amazing image in the world, um, but you know, it is what it is. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go down to file and place and right, it's bug thing.jpg. If you are doing this, um, you know, if you're looking at this tutorial, not from within the context of the course that I'm teaching, um, you can find any line drawing online or make your own and uh, bring it in as an asset. And so I'm going to bring this in, right, as you remember, right, top left corner. And then this image is pretty huge. Um, because it came from my phone camera, so I'm just going to hold down shift, click and drag, right? And it doesn't matter that it's, you know, not the white balance is terrible and all of that. All we're interested in is the line work on there, right? And so, I don't know. It's terrible, right? But it was something that was simple to do. And one of the techniques we're going to look at is how we do how we do this with like how you use a brush and how you can essentially combine all your brush strokes together to create um, cutouts for fill fill areas um, that are separate from the line work, uh, which is really useful if you're doing like anything with like a stroked edge um, as the, the style of work that you're doing. And, you know, before we get into that, I need to give a shout out to um, uh, a YouTuber, um, Chi World 1234 or 1234. I can't remember how he... Um, how he uh, discusses it, but he does really great work and he has a ton of videos that show the process of using Illustrator and using a photograph and working from a photograph to create like a cartoon style image of a person to do the shading, to do the line work, how to bridge it all together. It's fantastic. Um, so I highly suggest looking at those. He's much more skilled than I am um, at doing illustration work. And so, you know, I just want to make sure that he gets props and there's many other people out there that are, that also do similar work and, and do really amazing things. Um, and so those are really good to watch, um, as additions. So let's go back to the tutorial. So to start with, um, I've got this image, I'm on layer one. The first thing I'm going to want to do is reduce my opacity. It just makes it a little easier to see the work that I'm doing on top of this image. Um, and so, especially if, you know, with this one, it's, you know, there's pretty good contrast, but if you're working on an image where, you know, maybe the figure is, is dark, is darker for whatever reason, whether it's a darker complexion or just like poorly lit image, um, it makes it really hard to see the line work, um, as you, as you do that. So we're going to reduce the opacity down to about 50%. And then on the, I'm going to open up my layers panel and, Right next to the eye, there's a blank space. If I click on that, I can lock that layer. And this way, I don't accidentally select it. I don't draw on it. Um, and I, you know, I can keep my line work or shapes or whatever I'm making separate from the base image that I'm using as a reference. Then I want to create a new layer. And this is where I'm going to do you know, the, the bulk of my drawing. Now, at this point, there's a couple different um, ways to work based on what you're interested in doing. So if you're just creating a static image and it's just an illustration, you're not going to be changing it in any form or fashion um, or animate it. Like you're not going to be using this as an asset that you later want to rig and animate. Like say in this case, I want, you know, if I did want to rig and animate this, right, I want the body segments to be able to, to move against each other. Maybe I want the wings to be able to move. And I would want these to be able to, you know, the antenna things to be able to bend or flex or whatever. If I want all of those things to happen, um, then I'm going to be drawing in a very different way, right? Because what I'm going to need is I'm going to need these segments to overlap, right? So I'm going to be drawing shapes that 
right? Like this shape is going to come up and actually go under the head a little bit. And this next shape is going to be going on and on and so on, right? And so the other thing is, you know, thinking about the style of the anime of what you want to do. Do you want to have black, like inked line work um, around the entire image? Or do you just want these to be solid colors, right? And not solid colors, but right, they can have texture and and all sorts of things happening, you know, do you want them to have strokes or not have strokes is the big question. Um, if you, you know, think that you'd like to do the artwork in a way where you don't have strokes on it, then you might want to do it more in a shape version than the sec than the, the drawn version. And so we'll, we'll look at both of those um, and we'll do, you know, I'm going to only do a part of this um, just so we can see what's happening. And the other thing is if you have a drawing tablet or a mouse, the procedure is similar but slightly different. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started. So first, um, if you have a drawing tablet, um, you want to be like, and you want to be able to get like, to be able to control the thickness of the line and all of that, what you're going to want to do is you want to go up to the brush definition and you can go ahead and create a new brush and you want to create a new calligraphic brush. You hit okay. You come over here, you could call this, um, you know, line work brush or something like that line work maybe and I'm going to leave it at nine points because this is a you know maybe that's going to be too heavy uh, maybe I should actually let's do leave, let's put this at six points um, I'm going to say line work and then just six point six points right and then in this where it says fixed here for the size I'm going to make you make that based on pressure Right. And so um, and then I want my variation to be the full six points. So I just want to crank that up to the max. Right. So I can go from nothing to all the way to full. I'm going to hit OK. And now that I've done that, I can test it right with my with my tablet and using the brush. So I don't have the brush tool selected currently. So I'm going to hit the letter B on the keyboard to select the brush, which I had to do twice because that menu was open. So now, right, I can create, you know, line work that as I press, I can get really nice, smooth transitions here. Now there's some other settings for the brush that um, that are important to consider. And it really is going to, the way you set it is based on whether you're trying to draw with your mouse or you're trying to draw with a, with a tablet. Um, so if I either double click on the brush paintbrush icon, I will pop up the paintbrush tool options. The other way to get there is just to, with the brush tool selected is just to hit the return key on the keyboard and that option will pop up. Now, once that option pops up, there's the big thing we're focusing on here right now is fidelity. So fidelity by default is usually in the center somewhere. If you're depending on how it, this is really based on your feel with when you're working with the mouse, you definitely want your fidelity all the way to smooth. Um, because the mouse is going to track every little tweaky little motion that you make. Whereas you may want your fidelity to be all the way to accurate with your brush and it with your tablet. And it really depends on what you do. So if I put this all the way to, you know, the highest fidelity, then, right, I get, it basically does a very accurate tracking, right, of all of these things, which, you know, I can, you can see that, right, those, those are very accurate. If I open this up again and I go all the way to smooth, right? And I make a similar line, right? It's gonna only have two points on it and it's gonna make it much straighter, whereas it's not gonna track all of these little wiggles. And if I do some wiggles, it's gonna smooth those out as well, right? And so I can really control, um, you know, how even and smooth these things are and how much Illustrator either does or does not um, alter the strokes that I've done. So that's one of the big changes between the brush and the mouse. Now, the other thing with the mouse is if I use this, if I try and use this, like this line work brush that I just created, right? Um, and I think I have this set to smooth. I'm going to get this even weight to it. And even if I go in here and try and change my, um, right, this, the width profile here so that I can have, um, different things, right? I can change the, the thickness of my stroke, um, but I cannot change the width profile using a, cal a calligraphy, calligraphy brush. What I need to do is I need to change to basic 
And once I've changed the basic, I need to push this back up to say six pixels. And then you'll see that the width profile works, right? So those are the two big differences between working with a mouse or working with the other. If you want your line thickness to vary, you have to give it a width profile. Um, the nice thing about, and you have to use the basic, right? The nice thing about using basic as your type um, when you're working is you can go through and then like tweak your width profile and use whatever width profile you, you'd prefer to use, right? Do I want it to start out thick and go thinner? Um, do I want it to do the opposite? You know, how do I want this profile to look? Um, and then there's actually a tool that we can, that we'll look at later in the class that allow this one here that allows you to actually go on your stroke and tweak it and adjust it and make it whatever shape you want it to be. Okay. So those are the two ways that if we want to do hand drawing, we can do. And so I'm going to use this layer to just do a little bit of the hand drawn shapes um, so that we can take a look at how that process works. And then we'll do another where we do full shapes rather than just outlines. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, since I have my my tablet, I'm going to go ahead and use that and make my fidelity a little bit less intense. Oh, the other options we need to talk about are this keep selected, I have checkmarked, and edit selected paths. So what that means is that one, when you get done drawing, it keeps you know, the path that you just drew selected. But it also means that if I hover, if I get within 12 pixels, which was that setting there, um, I'm going to be editing the path that's already drawn rather than drawing a new path. So if I'm like, oh, I really kind of, I wish this was tighter to this line, then what I can do is I can just click here and I can do that and it will alter the stroke that's selected, which is a really handy way of editing the strokes that I've done. Um, the only issue with that is if I want to start drawing this next loop, um, if I'm not careful, I'm going to actually just alter this one and make it much larger. And so a quick way to deselect that is just to make a stroke out here in space that you can then easily delete later. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this next one. Now, the other thing I want you to note is that I'm overlapping these strokes. This is really important because when we go to do this, what we're going to do is we actually turn the strokes into fills, like into filled objects and then merged all of those together to create these islands in here. And if we have a gap anywhere, then um, it's not going to, when we go to do the final step, it's not going to fill in that area. And then we're going to have to step back and do a bunch of things over again. So you don't, you don't want to do that. And with more complex drawings, it's e much easier to make those mistakes. So I'm trying to keep this simple so that we can see how to do it right but with the understanding that it is possible to do it wrong. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing this. And you see I accidentally edited that, so I'm going to undo it. I'm going to make another stroke over here, and then I'm going to come in here and do the same thing. Okay. And now I'm going to come down and um, make sure that these are set. I'm going to undo that last little line that I drew. And now you'll note that this is really, really thin. And the question is, why is that? The issue is that I accidentally touched the tablet a little bit and drew a tiny little line right there. And then because I was editing that existing line, it kept that same tiny line weight. Um, so don't want to do that. So I'm just going to do the head here and then we'll terminate the next section. And we'll talk about if there's an edge where I messed up and didn't get it connected, what's going to happen then? Okay, so those intersect. Now this one doesn't intersect, and I can just create a new line that does that, does that and then those will all merge and it'll be fine. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do these next things. All right, and you know, there's it's not too challenging to go and then um, use the eraser tool once we get these all merge together to erase the sections that we don't, the little overlaps that we don't need, right? Sort of like, you know, anytime you're drawing and you need to like clean up some additional line work that you've done. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish a couple of these shapes real quick. 
and then we're going to talk about you know some of the wiggles that I have in here and how I can set that up. Now something I want you to note is that the brush tool does not close a stroke, right? So with several tools when you get close to the end Hold on a second, let me see if I can That's better. And then I'm just going to do the center. Okay. With several tools, right? If you get when you bring the the end close to the starting point, it will close the it will close that um that path and this the brush does not do that right um, and what we're going to actually look at the pencil tool because it does do that here in, in a little bit and I'm just going to do one last little thing there okay so now I've got some you know I've got some areas where I think it's a little bit too wobbly and I'd like to fix that so if I go over here the tool that may be up for you is the shaper tool or it'll be the pencil tool. Um, but go ahead and click on that tool and go to the smooth tool. Now the smooth tool um, works by, if I click and drag on this, I don't know if it'll do it on a unselected path. No, I have to select the path. So I need to set the, hit the letter V, use my selection tool, select the path that I want to edit. And then if I, and then select my smooth tool again. And what the smooth tool does is it takes any areas where, um, and it just sort of smooths them out. So if I click and drag, right, it's just going to clean some of these lumpy areas up, right, which is exactly what I want to do, right? I want to reduce some of the density there. And I could go through and do this on all of this. I could have also increased the fidelity a little bit, um, right, on my brush to start with, but I didn't do that. So, oh well. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag here and that should smooth that out some you know it's not doing a whole lot but if I do shorter segments it seems to clean it up a little bit better and it looks like it's probably trying to start at that start point. there we go All right so I can go ahead and work this as much as I want but I want this tutorial to continue so we're just gonna keep going okay so I've got this section done now ideally right I would do the entire body of this object but we're just gonna do this section now so we can see the process Okay, so I've done all my line work. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to go up and I want to duplicate layer two so that I have a copy of the line work when they're still all strokes, right? And actually, before I do anything, I want to select these two off here and just delete them because I don't need those. Um, and to duplicate a layer, what you do is you go up to the little three line menu here, you click and you say duplicate layer two. It'll create layer two copy. I'm just going to call this line work backup. And then um, I'm going to pull it down at the very bottom. I'm going to lock it and I'm going to hide it. All right. And so this is my backup. I'm not going to worry about using that again. Um, and then I want to create one more copy of the line work. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to go ahead, duplicate layer two, and I'm just going to call this line work. And this is going to be the line work that will show up on top of any coloring and filling that we do. So now I'm going to use layer two. And I, what I, once I have layer two selected, I'm going to hit Command or Control A to select all the paths on layer two. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to Object and I want to go down to Expand Appearance, which for some reason isn't, oh, isn't working because I have two layers selected. So I'm going to lock um, that line work layer as well. And I'm actually going to hide it just so I can see the so all I'm seeing is this layer and then the artwork behind it. So now instead of doing the select all, because that was problematic, I'm actually just going to use my selection tool. I'm going to click and drag to select everything on this layer. Now I should be able to go to object and expand appearance is still not an option. Why is that? So I just had a weird thing happen where um, when I went up to object, expand appearance was um, not highlighted, and I'm not 100% sure why that happened. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can recreate what was going on. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and see. So I have nothing selected. I click and drag, select all of these objects. I go up to object, and now expand appearance seems to be working. So if for some reason you get up here and expand appearance is grayed out. 
all I did, and this is strange to me, is I created a new layer. Um, I drew, I just, I, so I was in that layer. I drew a rectangle. I checked, suddenly expand appearance worked. Then um, I went and just came over to my layers over here. I clicked on the selection thing here to select all of this layer and suddenly expand appearance worked over here. So if it's grayed out, um, hopefully, you know, those are the steps I took and it worked and it was really confusing. I'm gonna get rid of layer five right now because I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna select this again. So that was strange. I've never had that happen before. Um, if it happens to you, hopefully this tutorial helps. Okay, so I've got this all selected. So now what I need to do is I need to go to Object Expand Appearance. Now what Expand Appearance does is it's going to take, if you had an object with multiple fills on it and multiple strokes, it's going to create a separate object for each of those fill layers and each of the strokes that you have on there, which can be really useful um, for many different reasons. The other thing it does is it doesn't just create an outline, right, a stroked outline. It actually turns the strokes into um, an object, into a fill. And so if I click on expand appearance now, you'll see that, right, instead of there being a stroke down the middle, now there's a stroke along the outside, right? So these are these are solid shapes. And now I can do the next step. I can merge all of these paths together. And, you know, I might want to just double check um, by going around the image to make sure everything is connected. This is one area that might be problematic. So what I may do is use my direct selection tool, the white arrow, and just select these two points here. And then just drag it a little bit. And it looks like I missed one. So select this third point here, there we go, and then drag it over here just so that those things intersect better, right? If there's any last minute little things, you can always do that. And then you want to select all of the paths that are on your current layer. And you're going to go to Pathfinder, which is over here in the Panels option. If for some reason Pathfinder isn't here, you can also go up to Window and go down to Pathfinder, and then it'll pop up in like a free floating window, and you can actually drag it over and drop it into your things here to make sure it's there, right? And the Pathfinder has all sorts of different ways of uniting and um, it shapes, right? The one we want to use is down in this lower one, not the shapes mode, but the Pathfinders and Merge. And when I click on that, you'll see that all of these overlapping paths now have become one solid object, right? So if I was to change the, um, the color stroke color, it would change it, or actually now it's the fill color, but if I was to change the fill color, it would change the fill color for the entire object. And if I click on my layers and flip this open, you'll see now I just have this group, right? And it is all of these objects that are still separate, but they are grouped together as one contiguous merged object. Okay, now that I've done that merge, um, the next thing I need to do is I need to create a, um, a rectangle fill. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just use my direct selection arrow. I'm gonna click off and space somewhere so I don't have anything selected. And I'm gonna change this color to whatever I want the base color of this head to be. I'm gonna say, just to make it easy to look at, it's gonna be this like kind of blue swatch here. And I'm gonna select my rectangle tool. I don't need a stroke on it. Um, and I'm just gonna click and drag to create this rectangle that covers all of that artwork. And then I'm going to right click on it and I'm gonna to go to arrange and send to back so I can see my original artwork. And then I'm gonna use the letter V or the direct or the selection tool. And I'm just gonna click and drag and select everything on this layer. And then once I've got all of that selected, all I need to do is go back to Pathfinder, click merge one more time. Now that happened really quickly, um, but if you have a bunch of strokes, Clicking on merge, it'll stay gray for a bit and nothing's going to happen And it, because it takes it a while to do all the calculations of all the intersections between the different lines. So now that I've merged these two, what that means is it's basically used these shapes to cut out sections from this big gray square. So if I either double click on this or I right click and just go down to isolate selected group, it's going to pop me into isolation mode and then I can select here. And I've, select, I've just clicked in this empty in the negative space around the shape. And I know that everything is correct. If I have an, this red outline around the whole outside of my shape, if it sneaks in and it's on the inside anywhere, that means that I have a gap where I didn't quite 
connect the lines together. Um, and so that's something that, you know, occasionally happens and then you have to undo the last few steps. Um, it's also why I always have people um, have that layer of the unaltered line work so you can go back to that, make your tweaks there, and then um, fix it without undoing all of these steps and trying to figure out where you were in the process. So now that I've selected this background, I can hit delete. And now I have right all of these different areas right that I can use as fills. Now I'm going through this quick and what I should have really done is um, after I merged all of these together I should use the eraser tool which um, is shift E and I could come in here with the eraser tool and click and drag to erase these different sections. Now um, you'll notice that I'm getting this other shape on here and that's not what I want so I'm going to undo that. If I hit the letter V and double click and get into isolation mode and then select this and then hold down shift E, right, I can come in and I can now I should be able to erase this. There we go. And there's no weird like eraser shape on top of it. Um, and I don't know if those eraser shapes actually matter or not, but um, it's just because of the way this is grouped. And so, right, so I can come in and I can fix all of these little overlaps if I want to, right? Maybe I do want overshoot on my strokes um, to be something that is part of the artwork, but in this case, you know, probably not. All right, so let's say I did all of those. Um, I'm not going to go through all of that because it takes a lot of time, um, but let's say I'm happy with that. So now I can double click to get out of isolation mode. I can, with nothing selected, again, change this back to whatever blue I was going to use, all right? Do my shape, um, right click, right? And um, send it to the back and then use the selection tool, select everything on this layer, and then go ahead and go to Pathfinder and click Merge. And once I've clicked on that Merge tool, then I can either double click um, to enter isolation mode or right click. I can again make sure that this is outlined like it's supposed to be, delete this. And now I can come in here and I can just do these, oops, do these different fills. Now, one of the issues with this and so I'm just going to say oh I want you know that to be black I actually want the eye to be blue um, but I want you know the around the eye to be some sort of white um, and maybe the head is oops I didn't need to do that let me get out of here there we go um, right and so we can just go ahead and recolor all of these to <laughs> whatever we want them to be. You kind of get the idea. And then once we've done this, we can add shading. Um, and we'll actually look at that really quick and then do the next thing. Now the issue is, right, if I was going to be using this as an asset that I want to animate at some point, right, and I want the eye to move on top of the, um, right, and I've missed a thing here, move on top, you can see that, right, it actually cuts a hole in there. So the, there's, there's no, um, right, this white doesn't underlay this entire thing. And so we'll look at another way of working that will help you, that makes it so that you can have your, um, right, have these things so you could animate the eye on top of this and there wouldn't be a hole underneath when you're done. But let's look at how we do color on this, how we do shading first. So we're going to go to layers again, and we're going to step out of isolation mode. And then we are going to um, create a new layer that has nothing on it. And uh, we can call this shading. And now I am really bad at this, right? So, um, and sometimes you should have shading as like in your drawing so you have something to reference, but in my case, I don't. So I have the shading layer selected and I could use the brush tool, I could use you know, whatever um, tool I want to do the shading, but I'm going to go ahead and use the brush tool. And then I want to shade this. Let's say that, you know, there's like a shadow on the lower part of these objects. And so I can come in here and I can say, all right, well, I used this blue. Let's set the shade color to this blue. Maybe I want it to be darker. And this is sort of like cell shading, right? Um, and what I'm doing here, because I have this line work up here, and actually I need to turn the visibility back on, and it looks like 
I accidentally misaligned this layer. So let me go ahead and um, get that lined up. Now, once I've done that, I should lock this lower layer, right? I want to lock all the layers that I'm not intending to alter so I don't make a mistake and alter something on accident. So I'm going to go to my shading layer. I'm going to use my brush and I've got it set to this dark blue. And then I can come in here and add my shading. And so I'm just going to use this stroke to kind of um, set where the where the top edge of that shading is going to be. And, you know, we'll just pretend, oops, that's like that. Now, of course, because I um, the way I have my settings set, um, I have keep selected on there. So that's not really super helpful. And maybe now I can come down here and right, have this come through there somewhere. Okay, so once I've got that top edge, I can actually use the opening or closing brackets to expand or contract the size of my brush. So I can come in here and I can just start filling in this area. Now what's nice is because I have these lines on top, you'll notice it looks like I'm overlapping this stuff. But really, I am, if I let go of that, you'll see that it goes under the line work. Right, so I have, oops, and for this, what I may do is I may change my brush option. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to uncheck keep selected. And I'm going to hit okay. And then what that's going to do is it means that, right, if I do a little bit here, this won't be selected. So I can do another brush stroke immediately next to it because, and that's like a much more efficient way to work when I'm doing shading like this. All right. So now I can do some simple shading on, you know, on this part of the thing. And I just use those edges as a guide um, and maybe I want like a hair shading in there so I'm just going to go ahead and shrink this down some and I don't want any shading right on the on the one side of the thing so I just want to go gently right but I can come in here and I can just make this like so Right, and all of this ends up taking a lot of time, um, so we're not going to go through it too much more. But you know, if I wanted a a lighter color, I can say this is the the base color, right? Now I can come down here, I can double click, and I can actually right choose a color that's you know maybe significantly lighter, and you know if I wanted some highlights, I could you know drop some highlights in like this. Um, and maybe those actually, if it's super shiny, maybe they need to be pure white or something like that. But otherwise, right? So you get the idea, right? I can come in and, and do these illustrations. And now I've just been using this standard brush, but there are a lot of artistic brushes out there um, that, like, if I click on this paintbrush, right, there's all sorts of different stroke styles. So if I wanted to do, um, you know, have this be, right, some sort of different, um, uh, you know, different stroke style on my artwork, right, I don't necessarily need to have this set to um, whatever I currently have it set to. The other thing is I can adjust the opacity, right, so if I wanted to say, right, build these up, right, in a more painterly way, um, so they merge together, I can do that as well. All right, so there's there's plenty of different options there for that. Okay, so now we've done, like we've kind of walked through how to do this style of um, of illustrating, right? Where we're going to have some line work. And granted, you can make these as thin as you want. Um, you just want to, again, make sure that they all overlap with one another. Okay, so now I want to do um, the other option, which is to do these as solid shapes, where maybe... Either A, I don't want to have um, strokes around my different, you know, body segments, or B, I want to be able to animate these or maybe move, even if they're not animated, I want to be able to pose this differently um, in Illustrator for different panels. So let's go ahead and go to layers, and I'm going to turn off the visibility of and lock everything that we've done except layer one. And I'm actually going to take all these layers that are here, I'm going to pull them down so they're below layer one, right? And layer one is sort of like my barrier between, you know, things I'm not using right now and things I'm going to be working on. So now I'm going to create a new layer again. 
And this time I'm going, instead of using the brush, what I want to use is the pencil. And this is again, if I'm doing free form drawing, I could always use the pen tool or the curvature tool as well to make these shapes. But if I'm doing free form drawing, the pencil tool is a great option. Now, I do have the pencil tool set to right, whatever my brush settings were set last. So I want to change that. I want to go back to basic. I want to go to opacity at 100%. And when I did that, it switches back. So I click on basic again. And I want to change the color to black to start with, right? And we're using the stroke. And maybe basic won't work with the pencil. I don't know why it's there. Now that I've drawn once with it, it should be there, but it keeps switching back. So just note that for whatever reason, the definition likes to revert, um, which is kind of annoying. But the pencil tool, if I hit enter, right, I get the pencil tool options. And you can see that, again, I have fidelity. I have this, I could either fill new pencil strokes, which we're not going to do right now. I could keep selected, um, which maybe we do want to do right now to make our life a little easier. Um, option key toggles the smooth tool, which, right, if I check mark that option or alt, if you're on Windows, would toggle smooth, which could be really useful. And it says close path, close path ends when they are within 15 pixels. This is something important that changes. It's a big difference between the pencil and the paintbrush. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Um, and actually, we won't need these to be selected. Let's just hit OK. And so I'm going to do something similar. But right, if I want these to be posable, I need some material hiding under each layer in order, or hiding under the, pr the prior shape in order to, um, to have room for that to happen. And so I'm going to go ahead and start here in the center. And because I don't know, you know, quite where I want that to be. It doesn't really matter as long as I do this. And I have, I'm using my mouse and I have my fidelity set as smooth as possible, right? And you saw that turn into a circle there and now I've got this shape. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and the way I'm gonna work is like whatever shape is, right? This one's underneath this one, which is underneath this one. And so I wanna just work, you know, that way. I can always rearrange these later if I want to, um, but, Right, so that one's connected, and then with this one, um, I'm going to say this whole thing is one shape. And maybe I'll use that edge there um, just as a way to change shading or something at some point. Let's go ahead and close that off. All right, and this is a little too straight, so I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to give it a little bit more bending, and maybe I need to adjust my fidelity some. So I have a bit higher fidelity, but whatever the case, I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Now, once I've done those three, um, because of the way I'm working, um, right, I do actually have these this other antenna here, but I could just use some of these same shapes again. So I'm going to go ahead and select this shape and this shape. Um, I'm not going to select this shape yet, but I'm going to go ahead and copy these and paste them. And I'm not doing paste in front because um, I just want to scoot these over a little bit. And it's really hard to see with no fill on these. So I could just temporarily give these like a grayish fill so I know if they're in front or behind this other artwork. And then I can right click on with both of these selected and I can just go arrange, send to back. All right. And so what that's going to do is now um, these two are on top right, of uh, these other ones. And so maybe if I select these three, I could fill these with like a light gray or something. So I have some sense of like what's in front and what's behind. And then what I need to do is I want to select this one, right, because I want I need to draw in front of this. So I'm going to um, make give this no fill for the time being because I can't see my lines there. I'm going to grab this pencil tool. Again, the pencil tool will edit a selected path as well. So um, I'm going to hit V, on deselect. I'm going to hit N, which is the pencil tool quick key. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create this shape. Now, ideally, and we'll see how this goes, and maybe this shape isn't perfect, but whatever. Ideally, when I flip open my thing, this last path that I just drew should, is, you know, for whatever reason, it's actually on top. So I just want to make sure I pull this down so that it is on top of this previous path, right? But below everything else that's around it. Okay. 
And so now what I need to do is I need to draw this head. Now, I may say this is like a hard seam, right? Where this doesn't, this part doesn't bend at all. Only motion happens up there. So, um, so I don't need this to extend into the head, but I am going to go ahead and draw the head shape here. Oops. And I totally overshot that. So let me fix that. Now, you know, whichever shapes on top, I'm going to want to be the one that really defines, right, that edge between the two. Um, for the eye, I'm going to reduce the fidelity just a little bit on this tool. Um, I'm going to make it a little less smooth. And so I just kind of get these harder corners in here and preserve a little bit of that curvature that's on that straight edge. And I may have to soften it up some more. That's pretty good. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and just do the eye. Right, and I did this in the wrong order. Um, I should do whatever I want to be below first. I can, again, always reorder, but it's easier to do it this other way. Oof, that's a rough path. Um, I am going to increase my fidelity now and maybe try and use my tablet just to make this go a little quicker. And again, I failed miserably, so use letter V. I'm going to select this path. And then I'm going to use the letter, oh, the letter N to edit this path. And I'm going to continue this on and hopefully fix it. I did not. So I'm going to undo that, undo that, and just go ahead and try again. Now, I could also create a circle and then just like warp it a little bit, but whatever. Okay, so I've made that path. Um, I'm actually going to select it. I'm going to use my direct selection tool, and I'm just going to cheat and, you know, pull these out a little bit <laughs> um, and leave it kind of wobbly like it is, right? Because I'm just having a rough time drawing this for some reason. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to deselect this shape. I'm going to use the letter N. I'm going to quickly just come in here and make that circle. Now it looks like for some reason it decided not to connect the ends of this. Um, so I just want to zoom in and make sure, yep. So this didn't connect for some reason, right? So if I click and drag and select these two endpoints, then this option to connect selected endpoints pops up and I can just click that and make that connection. And if I use the pen tool or hit the letter P, I can just subtract one of those points and if I hold down Option or Alt, this one, this point's currently a hard corner. If I hold down Option or Alt, I can, um, I should be able to, there we go, click and drag to pull some handles out and soften that up a bit. And then use the letter A to give my direct selection and just pull this up so it fits the, uh, the shape of that iris a little bit better. Okay, so, right, so I've done these shapes now. And so let's go ahead and apply fills to all of these different shapes. So I'm going to start with the eye. I'm going to make this black. Then I'm going to select the uh, pupil, or sorry, the iris. I'm going to make that maybe a solid blue. I'm going to select the eye. I'm going to make that white and maybe just like a little bit off white. Um, and then I'm going to select the head. And I think in the last one I had it be some sort of blue color. Um, maybe I'll make it this gorgeous teal. <laughs> um, and so now one of the things I can do, right, is if I hold down shift, right, if I wanted this to be animated or move, right, I can actually move the eye around and repose it. Um, the other thing I can do is if I come up here and I say, okay, let's make that bright blue. We'll make this, um, kind of yellow and we'll make this one green. Right, and so I can do those. Now, the other thing I can do is if I want to um, take the appearance of one object and apply it to another, I can just take the eyedropper tool, and if I have an object selected and click on what I want to switch it to, I can do that, or I can say, oh, maybe this one's yellow, so they stand out better against each other. And then I can come down to, um, I can use my selection tool, 
select this outline and I can um, use the letter I as the eyedropper tool, make this one green, and then um, select this final outline down here, which I might have to click off. There we go. And now I can make this one, I'm just gonna make it magenta, just so that it's really easy to see. Now in terms of shading, um, you know, it, it, this does, um, I'm not gonna have kind of the, that same freedom, um, but what I can do is I can, I could potentially create a second layer um, above this um, and make the and make shaded shapes on top of this. And we're gonna talk, there's live paint and stuff as well, which we'll talk about later, but this, Right. One of the things this allows is, right, I can go ahead and now move these a little bit. And right, if I wanted to repose this whole this whole thing, um, I can use my rotate tool. So I can go to this under or sorry, not under scale, right? Next to scale is rotate. And what that does is it allows me to have this my center anchor. And if I want this to rotate from say here, I hold down option and click. And I can adjust the angle, or if I just hit OK and then rotate, it'll allow me to rotate it from there. Um, and I probably should have um, had this one attached and selected on there, but you know, whatever, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate this guy back, right? So, you know, depending on what your purpose is, um, there's these two different methods. And I still have strokes on all of these, right? But there's no need for me to stroke these objects, right? I can select all of these and just turn the stroke off. Um, if I wanted to have, you know, full color here, right? And with these shapes, I can always go to my appearance panel. I can add additional fills. And if I want to do like, you know, a softer style shading, I can do a gradient and I can set that opacity to um, multiply and then use my gradient tool um, to, you know, uh, to shade this thing. And if I want it to be like a linear gradient, and obviously I don't want it to be that long, right? Or that dark necessarily, I can grab this and double click. For some reason that's not doing it. And I can just set my, you know, face a little bit less intense. And then I can either adjust my gradient or my things and really, right, dial this in and get this like you know, this more gentle um, thing. And really what I should be doing is pulling this whole end inside. There we go. And so I can, you know, if I can do this as a linear gradient, I could also switch this to a radial gradient. Um, if I wanted that to be like a more rounded um, feel to the, to the gradient. So it's really, uh, move that point in a little bit. There we go. Right, and so now that I've got, right, so I can use this to continue to to do settings. And one thing I should be able to do is, I don't know if I can copy this to another object or if I can just drag and drop it. Nope, that's odd. Hmm. So one other thing, right, I can switch this appearance. I could mirror this appearance here by using my right, my brush tool, oops, um, my eyedropper tool, right, and then um, and then just go in with that object selected and change my fill color here back to yellow, um, right, and I might need to adjust the position of the gradient some based on, right, the size and shape of this object. I might want to stretch this out some, so it's just like a little bit, right, but so this again gives me a different way to work with my objects. Why did that okay, not? so we've looked at one at ways to to shade this um, using uh, tools that we've talked about before and ways we've talked about before. But there's a tool I want to introduce that can make shading, um, especially like simple cell shading like this, a lot simpler. And that tool is called the Live Paint. Tool. And what the live paint tool does is it makes it really easy to take a group of objects and turn them into a type of object where you can recolor portions of them. And so sometimes you do that with the way they overlap with one another. Um, but what it does is it'll create color groups for each individual layer. Now, this might be problematic if, again, I want to be moving my eye around. Um, 
and we'll we'll take a look at that. And so I'm going to show you the simplest way to to apply it to a large group of objects, um, and then there's some other ways that we can work as well. So um, so let's go ahead and um, start this process. So the simplest thing to do is let's go ahead and just create um, an ellipse somewhere on the screen. Um, it's currently set to whatever color this was. You can set it to whatever you want, just not black. That's going to be harder to see what's going on. And then I'm going to use the pencil tool and I just want to draw a line, right, kind of partially through it, extending beyond the edges. Now, I don't have a stroke currently applied and that's why the line disappeared. But if I go ahead and use my selection tool and click and drag, I can select both of those. If it's easier, you can always have a little stroke on this line so it's easier to see. So I've got these two objects, and then I need to make this a live paint group. To do that, there's a tool here, there's what's called the Shape Builder tool, um, is usually on top, but we want to go down to the Live Paint Bucket tool. And what this does is the first thing I do if I hover over this, I get this little thing that says click to make a live paint group. So I click on it, and because I had the same color, um, it's going to stay the same. But what the what's here is you'll notice now I can color these two things differently. So if I double click on here and I go down and I set this to a darker version of itself or a lighter version of itself, right? I can click and that was probably too dark. Let's go ahead and bump this up a little bit. There we go. Right? So I can very quickly right, make something that has like a simple shading based on where this line goes through here. Now I don't just have to use a line. I just want to show you that you can also, if I create, say, you know, two or three objects on top of each other, and I use V and I select all those objects that I want, and I go back to my live paint bucket, which is the letter K, I make this a group, then I can come in here and I can, let's just say I want one of these to be brighter, maybe this one. Um, I can very quickly go in and recolor these overlapped areas. Right, so I'm just you know kind of randomly choosing what color to place where, um, and I'm going to show you another setting on this here in just a second. Let's let's make this like a pale pink. Okay, so I've got all of that set. So now that this is a live paint group, what I can do is I can double click in here, and if I move these around, you'll see that right the I can you know, adjust things and they still have these same colors. And you'll see that depending on, you know, what, what's overlapping with what I'm going to get, it's going to keep those live uh, paint selections, right? So if I was like, oh, actually the shading on this one should, um, right, should only be this far, or maybe I actually even want to use my um, arrow here and like, snug this up and maybe, right, oops, <laughs> missed, uh, maybe adjust this curve some um, and continue to adjust this point, which, you know, I don't know what happened in this version, but I've never had this much trouble with doing this, right? So I can change the shape of that selection. Um, and it's just a really easy way to simply shade things. It's a super handy tool. So on the head, um, right, I could either select all of these objects, right, together, and then, um, and before I do that, actually, let's go ahead and use the pencil tool. I'm just going to draw a line, like a shading line, kind of across here on the head, and notice it doesn't appear, but if I use my selection tool and hold down shift and click and drag, right, I can grab all of those objects. I can use my tool to make this a live paint group, and I have this color selected already, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to start there, and now I can double click. I can make this darker, right? Set that darker. I can now double click and use like maybe, maybe a slightly darker gray for my eye color, so it's in shadow, and then a slightly darker blue for my eye color, which that's a little bit more grayed out than I want. There we go. That's probably good right, for my eye color. And if I hit V and deselect, right, you'll see that now I have this shading that cuts across all of these objects. Now, right, and I should still be able to open this group up, right, and if the, um, right, if the eye moves, right, if I want this to, you know, 
come down. The only thing is because I didn't bisect the black section, uh, the iris, then things are a little weird, um, right? But I can still uh, move this and I could always adjust this line. The big thing is, right, if it's a live paint group, I want this intersection to happen across here, even though it's gonna stay black. Um, but, right, so this is another way that I can, you know, create shading and still be able to move things. And then all of these layers are groups. So, right, the whole head can move together, um, whatever needs to happen. Okay, so, right, that's a super quick introduction to live paint. Um, as another way to think about shading your objects.